The frigid temperatures outside will not deny the heat and energy inside these players as they are back on the ice for round two of this 2023-24 season. One team looks to get on a hot streak in time for tournament play, while the other looks to cement a run of their own already from some great strides made in the past year. The battle of I-57, the DePaul Blue Demons, and the Illinois Fighting Illini, game one of this weekend series. Good evening, everyone, from the Big Pond in Champaign, Illinois, and streaming live on the Illini Hockey Network. On the call, I'm George Corey. Great to have a lot of you back with us who remember this Illini team from last year as one looking to make a run with all of the pieces in place to do so. Getting a lot of help from the young guns, Anthony Varasi and Harrison Slovic in particular. The veterans haven't gone anywhere, and Nolan Woodring has stepped up in a massive way in net as the season progressed. But he's not playing tonight, and the team's veteran netminder, Ben Mazurik, his 1A counterpart, will have to contend with what has been this team's biggest weakness, Fridays. Yes, you heard that right. They haven't been able to play clean right out of the gate. They've been slower with a few more mistakes than normal. So will this Christmas break add to that rust or will more practice time have mitigated that and will the Illini come out of the gate quicker? Sitting on the other side in their way, however, is a DePaul team whose calling card is something that is also very much hurt Illinois, speed. They play with a lot of it, especially in the middle of the ice. Every position on this team has speed, from standout defenseman Chris Lee to the two very strong top lines up front. This may very well be a game one in the middle for DePaul. But what they have on offense, they lack on defense. And the reaction time in the doghouse has been a bit of a struggle for them. And that push pill, speed one way and some lethargy on the other, are two of the main ingredients in what may very well be a high scoring game tonight. So to get things kicked off, we now send you down to the ice for starting lineups and the national anthem. Brought to you by Skender, the general contractors behind the premier construction experience. Visit Skender.com to learn more. Here is public address announcer, Nick Miner.
Levi's Blue Hats will sing an overnight national anthem for Black Lives High School. By Skender, the general contractor is behind the premier construction experience. Visit Skender.com to learn more. Again, we talked about it. Ben Mazurik in net for Illinois tonight in place of Nolan Woodring. And Woodring had been getting a lot of the starts to round out that 2023 calendar year. So we'll see how the veteran Mazurik handles things against the team again in DePaul with a lot of speed on the other side. The power of those top two lines, in particular, the, the connection between Chris Lee and Billy Passion that has gone as far back as grade school. Those two have known each other for a long time. They played together on a line in high school in Elmhurst, Illinois. And that connection, again, a lot of speed on this team, but it's really spearheaded by those two players. So as we get set here, look for ways for Illinois to try and slow down that speed, particularly with some physical plays. A shot right off the bat, testing Missouri early. Right back in front, they get one and score! Right on cue, they take it to him right away. And nine seconds into the game, DePaul has a goal. And the first one in the line, Billy Passion. We talked about it. His speed, his quickness, they're getting help from the third man in that line, the centerman Michael Health, who fed it to him beautifully early. And DePaul active very quickly. Giving Missouri no time to rest. And there you see the speed again as a chase down for it. Luke Alpi right there. It was Passion chasing it down. DePaul getting the possession back. They're moving quickly offensively. Alpi harassing a man, has to turn it around. Shot quickly there and swallowed up. So first shot, first goal. Nine seconds into the game coming from Billy Passion. His 24th of the season. Illinois wins that face off. Let's see if they can get it out of their own doghouse, and they do. Gregory Ettingen running for it. Sends one high in on Motu, deflected aside. A fight for it. In the near side corner, pulled out. Matt Veeb trying to go through and stopped. Off the glove there of Asher Motu, starting netminder, half of this 1 2 platoon employed by Dan Wood's squad. Motu entering 15 games with a 9-3 and three record and a save percentage just north of 900. But again, we talked about it. Defense hasn't really been giving him a lot of help. He's had to face about 42 shots a game when he plays. And again, a testament to something teams have been able to beat DePaul on, which is slow defensive reaction time. There's a fight for it and pulled out to the far side. Turning that one around now is Brock Ash. Second line in for the Demons. Illinois able to take it away, but feed it to nobody there. McDonald tried for a deflection, couldn't get one as it's sent to the near side neutral zone. Pulled quickly by DePaul into the other side. Now it's Aiden Taylor there alongside Matt Newton. A fight for it in the near side corner. Still being fought for. Pulled back closer out to the point. Pulled out to a white sweater, but able to be kept in by the Demons off a deflection. Quick shot there, right into the breadbasket of Missouri. 
That shot again from the aforementioned Ash. The second line for DePaul consisting of the centerman, Luke Theodopoulos, alongside Matt Newton and Brock Ash. Face off, pulled out quickly. Still kept alive by DePaul, but not for long now as they have to tag up offside as a result. And if you're just joining us, one shot, one goal, nine seconds into the game, coming from Billy Passion. A face-off, a shot right away, and then Passion took advantage of the Zurich's over-pursuit and sent one top shelf. Nathan Dash trying to clear it. Illinois trying to get something set, but it's the speed credit to them on both sides that has overwhelmed this Illini team thus far. Again, speed on both sides from DePaul and massive improvements early defensively, although we're only two minutes into the game, and now we're starting to see the presence of Illinois' forecheck show a bit more. Not that time, though, as it's kept alive in front and a shot sent, but play stopped. And some shoving after that. Stick collisions between Atticus Helfer and Xander Plotkin. So we saw Illinois on that series in the near side corner in the DePaul defensive zone increase their forecheck. And again, we talked about it. Muddy it up, make it physical, keep them to the outside. And that's a way you can slow this DePaul team down if you're Illinois. Andrew McLean chasing it around. Now Joe Dorian has it. Ricochets off a few sticks. It's taken by DePaul now in their own defensive zone. Again, two minutes into the game, already a goal for the Demons. That one goes through two black sweaters, chased down now for it, and an icing that will send this back into the offensive zone for Illinois. Second line on and a line change. Sasha Matviv leading the way alongside Gregory Ettingen. And the second defensive line as well for Illinois in the form of Alpi and Slovic. Matviv on the faceoff, one by DePaul. Circumventing that clear. Still in the trapezoid now as they're waiting to clear it. There's that Illinois forecheck and it is slowing them down, but once DePaul gets into the neutral zone, they turn the Jets on. That's exactly what happens and turned aside by Missouri. Still being fought for in that near side corner. It gets to a man and a shot deflection right in front. Great stick play right there by Illinois to deny that one from getting on net. DePaul now controls, sends it right back in. Ricochets wide, but still able to control it in the near side corner. Going around one man with a lane, centering pass, still in front. Missouri has to go out. And it's taken now, but still controlled by DePaul. In the trapezoid, looking for a feed, and that's wide. Slovic looks to clear and does, as he got hammered around the boards there. And play stopped. It was Slovic indeed who made the first of those great stick plays in the crease to deny a point blank chance from DePaul. And then the second time, it was actually the skate of Gregory Ettingen that denied that, forced Ben Mazurik into some white paint. And Illinois was lucky that didn't result in a two goal deficit. Matt Veeve in dangerous territory, been able to clear it now. A chase down between Anthony Verassi and Josh Maloney. Sent back around, Verassi has some help. Ettingen collides with one man, gets it in front for a shot. Save made, still alive in front, sent wide. Now DePaul has it and clears it. Having to get that out of there, he does. Turnover right now, DePaul, they're putting a body on these Illinois players. We talked about Illinois not giving them any room. It's DePaul doing the same for Illinois in the neutral zone on that possession there. Turned around now, the Demons control. They get it back into the trap as Lloyd centering pass. Deflected away by Aiden Taylor and a nice play by him, but the Demons still able to control in their own no zone. Moving quickly in front, save made off of the deflection. And that was a beauty right there from Missouri. Back the other way now, that's Drake Niles Cox moving in for Illinois. Still has it, turns it around, he scores! Credit instead to Matthew McDonald right there for that goal. Illinois wearing special jerseys, but what an absolute lapse right there from Asher Motu. A little bit of a miscommunication there between Motu and his defenseman. 
over who would handle that puck. And credit to McDonald for staying with it. We've seen him make a lot of plays for some goals in front. And Illinois has just put this back on even terms. Again, they were down nine seconds into this game. Now McDonald scores off of a miscommunication. New life for Illinois and frustration automatically for DePaul. What a breakaway here and now with a chance right in front. Save made. And a beautiful one there by Missouri off the feed from Theodosopoulos. Sent on back around now, that's Bogdanoff. Shot in front, deflected, turned aside. Dash with another one, right to a black sweater. DePaul looking to clear. They're taking their time in the trapezoid as Atticus Helfer lays the boom. Still taking their time. Again, this is an area in which Illinois can exploit the forecheck in order to slow DePaul down. They do get it into the neutral zone now, but deflected off of a skate and turned around. Zurich denies that, but nearly a takeaway there. He has to get back set right now as Atticus Helfer holds on. Still being fought for near side corner. Still waiting for it now in the way there. Xander Plotkin, but pulled out to neutralize where DePaul will control. Helfer right in the middle of everything here over these last 30 seconds, but an offside called as Matt Deeb tried to go in. Soft pulled out to the near side of the neutral zone. Now in the DePaul defensive zone. Again, they're taking their time. They're trying to turn on the Jets, but they can't be too conservative because that's an area in which Illinois can exploit. Right in front, off the post there. The shot from Anthony Matriano. Motu sends that around, looking to clear it. Great play there to keep it in by Illinois at the far side point. But now having to tag up, is holding onto that one, Luke Alpe. He gets it pickpocketed from his sixth. Still being fought for and neutralized. Pulled out to the near side now. DePaul will control. Moving to send it across. That's Josh Maloney. He does so to the far side. DePaul looking for a pass in the middle. Illinois with great coverage right there. Swarming defense. Ettingen, Barassi in front. Too high. Ettingen trying to make something out of nothing here. One on two becomes a two on two. DePaul looking to clear and they do. Xander Plotkin. Moving around now, a one-on-one -on, -one on the near side. Tries to feed it into a man, but Missouri will smartly freeze it. So, and again, it's still early, six minutes into this game, but so far what we are seeing is DePaul is making hay from the speed and Illinois is making hay from when they slow things down in their own defensive zone. So. As a quick shot there, saved by Missouri. What we said would impact both of these two teams in terms of what their biggest advantage is on the other, what we said about that coming into this game has been proven relatively true. Again, six and a half minutes into this one, both teams already with a goal, Passion and McDonald respectively. That one sent back in and we'll have take three from the near side circle. off between McMaster and Ettingen. That's Gregory Ettingen in particular. Aaron sends that across far side looking for a pass in front. Can't get one now. Great swarming defense right there. That was Emmett Joy on the stop. He muddies up this game by sending it to the boards. DePaul will have to reset. Illinois with some swarming defense here. They're sending one or two to the puck almost trying to trap it here and they're making DePaul backpedal. Aiden Taylor now trying to do the same. It goes off a stick, sent back around. Emmett Joy has to turn that around. DePaul's turn to muddy up the game and to try and gain a possession. They cannot. Joy sends it around. Illinois' turn to wait patiently. McDonald has to chase after it, and he clears it. Line change for Illinois, abbreviated one for DePaul as well. Too hot to handle right there, but still able to get on it, rather. Sidewinder, and for nobody, off the stick of Danny Manorino. 
Billy Passion with it now. Watch for the connection between him and Chris Lee. Again, that's a connection that's as old as grade school for these two players, and that top line is already combined for a goal. Back into Passion, centers one, goes high! Save made, still alive and bottled up. And a few moments of tussling after the fact. That time it was Passion and Manorino. Face off to the left of Ben Mazurik, won by Alexander Matt V for Illinois. Nathan Dash will take his time, feed it to his line mate Joe Dorian, looking for a clear on the near side. Nearly taken away as a huge open ice hit there. Helicoptering was Matt V, but Illinois will still be able to send it in to the near side offensive zone. Matt V turns it around, waiting patiently for his men to tag up, but it's taken now by Motu in the trapezoid. Errant clear there, but an offside called as Unable to keep that one in was Ettingen. Again, we talked about the connections in terms of Lee and Passion and a fellow York High School alum in Joe Dorian who had an up-close seat to watch those two play in the high school years. And to another connection is we haven't seen him play yet, but the freshman centerman Justin Verlinski for this DePaul team. High school teammates for four years with the Ettingen brothers at Stevenson High School in Downers Grove. So a lot of connections between these two and a lot more scouting going into this series just from personal knowledge already. As we're eight and a half minutes in, again, one goal each from either team already. We predicted this would be a high school, a high scoring game rather because of Illinois' exploits on DePaul and DePaul's exploits on Illinois were both in the offensive zone. One has great speed and one harasses on the forecheck and both of those lead to goals. DePaul showing off some more speed here on a two-on-two. Theodosopoulos sends it back around for a shot and a score! Right on cue, he took that one away, right away off the faceoff and then fed it right back in. Brock Ash with the goal, and DePaul answers right back. Number 15 on the season for Ash, and again, what a beautiful feed from the second line centerman, Luca Theodosopoulos. Now DePaul will control on the far side, and if you're Illinois, you look for an answer right away, just as you did the last time. They're employing the pressure, they're getting a bit more physical on the outside, trying to take away pucks there, it's a big hit from Bogdanoff. Now Nathan Dash will control, and we talked about the physicality as a means to slow DePaul down. There a takeaway, however, as it gets close, deflection there from Bogdanoff. Theodosopoulos right in the middle of everything once again for the Demons. A one on three, however, now. Helfer waits, feeds it in, David Ettingen tries to go through two men, still able to keep it alive somehow and get it back to Helfer, who gets it back to Alpi. Dash now, fires in front. Save made by Asher Motu. So in normal circumstances, you can say that, you know, a team scoring two goals on you in the first 10 minutes, you, you'd think you'd be very demoralized. First game coming back, you had the thought of, you know, winning that one against your rival Purdue going into the Christmas break, but Illinois already has a goal on the board, and that was really one man doing that in Matthew McDonald. Breakaway here, we'll pause that thought as nearly going down now, but taking it to the corner, Ryan Plotke. Alpi has to clear, a man on his six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Illinois does clear, right to a black sweater now. Alpi on the far side. Feeds it to Slovic. Illinois looks to get set. Illinois' turn to take their time in their own D zone. Only one man really pressing on the forecheck for DePaul. They're looking for a long pass here, and they send one to nobody, which results in an icing. But you know, to that point, because Illinois already has a goal under their belt, the average feeling you may have of 
getting two goals scored on you in the first 10 minutes of a hockey game is reduced because you've already tied this game once. So instead of thinking, woe is me, you're automatically thinking, I've already brought it back once. I can do it again very quickly. Matt Veeve entangled for the face-off, backhand chance swallowed up by Mazurk. As we're exactly 10 minutes into this hockey game. The goals again coming from Passion. His 24th of the season, nine seconds into the game. Matthew McDonald answered shortly thereafter. And then about four minutes after that, it was Brock Ash, the captain, for DePaul. Matt Veeb will again work in the circle with Ash. Lucky deflection there for Aslan Zuzabetkov. He tries to go around now for Illinois. Still able to hold on to it on the far side corner. He's harassed by three black sweaters, but Atticus Helfer able to find that one. Wait patiently, looking to get it back to the point. Instead, feeds it to the trapezoid. A repeat of the play there with Zuzabetkov in the corner. Has a few men to his left towards the point, towards the half wall for Illinois. Dorian and Matt Vive right there, still being fought for on that near side. Matt Vive has it, looks to go in. Pass unable to be handled by Zuzabetkov. Dorian has to chase that one down and does. Cleared quickly and now a breakaway on the other side. That's Billy Passion. Zuzabetkov with some great defense to deny him the lane and force him to the outside. Dorian gets hammered along the board. Zuzabetkov fighting for it, taken away now by DePaul. Sent that one in, beautiful block right there to deny that from Illinois. They're still making DePaul backpedal, but now a chase down for it at the half wall on the near side. Joe Dorian fed around to the trapezoid. That appears to be Nathan Dash now on the far side. It will send that around, he does. David Ettingen, long pass, looking for his brother Greg on the near side corner. And play stopped. That might be a penalty. And the call is indeed a trip. Yet to see who it's on, but the first power play in this game for either team. The call is a trip. The Illinois box opens, and it's Gregory Ettingen. So now to a power play for DePaul, a chance to gain a commanding two-goal lead early in this game, and a power play that has heavily improved since the season started. Again, part of that is speed, part of that is chemistry. Again, if you're Illinois, deny the ability for Chris Lee and Billy Passion to get involved. Health and Manorino as well have, have been involved with Passion already in this game on plenty of shots. So you almost have to deny every connection on this top line in order to be successful, turn everything into a one-on-one, -on -one, one on two battle. Going in there, puck still alive, denied by Missouri and cleared by Illinois. Again, four guys who really have chemistry, four out of five on this top line, makes it very hard here for Illinois to deny them. So you, you have to keep them to the outside. You have to make them play isolated. Man gets hit, still being fought for as it's taken now. A two on two puck battle that is. Now it becomes three on two as it's sent to the point and controlled by DePaul. Playing catch. Looking to go in now, Illinois being pesky with a box defense right in front of the crease. Back out now it goes in a shot and a glove save from Missouri. Line changes for both teams. And the face off between Health and Matt Vive, won by the former and controlled by the Demons. Health sends that one around, swarming defense there from Matthew McDonald. Still able to be kept in. In the trapezoid, Dorian senses blood, tries to go for it. Still being controlled here by DePaul. Centering pass, unable to be handled. Second chance there. Too high and deflected. Illinois has swarmed DePaul when they've gotten close. And it's paid off here on this penalty kill. Now Matt Vive moving in, has a man behind him and a man in front of him, trying to hold on to it, taken away by Chris Lee from the rear. One man gets hammered into the boards. It's Matt Vive 
and Lee that got collided and play is stopped. As everyone is up for both teams, everybody got up very quickly. So the call, rather than a stoppage in play, is indeed a penalty. And talk about rubbing salt in the wound. Alexander Matviev is now in the box. 22 seconds left on the original power play. Tack on two more minutes. You have a third of a minute of five on three here for DePaul. Seven minutes left in this one, in this first period. And again, a chance to nab a critical two goal lead very early in this game. Both captains discussing things over with the linesman. As it appears for that hit on Lee by Alexander Matveev, he will get two minutes. And that is painful, not just to have five on three for Illinois, but to have one of your streakiest players, Ettingen, in the box, and your top centerman, Alexander Matveev, in the box as well. You've been denied of your speed by the fact that you have two of your best men in that department in the box for some time now. Perhaps maybe the only saving grace here is that the five on three will last as short as it will, only for 22 seconds. So with two of Illinois' missiles, two of their speed weapons out of the game now in the box, you have to imagine DePaul's going to want to pounce very quickly. cross ice passes are, are not their identity, but if you can create that on the power play in order to take advantage of the speed that you do have, that might work well. But hold on. Illinois is skating out four men. Matt Veed is in the box. Hold everything here. It appears a DePaul player has joined Alexander Matviev in being sidelined for two minutes. They appear to be incidental minors. That does appear to be a DePaul player in the box. So please discard the analyses of the last few minutes as it was a five on four. Now Ettingen is out of the box and it's a five on five. Unclear as to why that happened. The entrance into the box, as one fed on right around, was very abrupt, and we have not received word from the linesman as to why that was called. A late penalty call on DePaul has negated a potential five on three and put things back onto even terms. Wow. That was an opening of the penalty box door very late. Unclear still as to who is in the box. Again, no word on the scoreboard or on the monitors, no official update here from the linesman as to why that late call was made. But whether it's a delayed call, it's certainly a break for Illinois not to deal with a five on three and two more minutes of a power play. They're back to full strength and what better to capitalize that swing than a goal here with six minutes left in the first period. 50-50 puck battle. In the near side corner, Nathan Dash is there alongside Atticus Helfer, alongside Anthony Martirano. DePaul trying to feed it into the trapezoid. Joe Dorian gets there first, looks to clear, and does. Back to neutral ice. A few sticks cancel each other out. On the four check there was David Ettingen. So now DePaul has it in neutral ice, but fed away right to David Ettingen. He tries to go around one man and goes down and a tripping is called as a result. David Ettingen tried to go through the legs right there and he ends up three feet off the ground. So that, that's as close to a momentum change as you can get going from a potential five on three to now a power play for Illinois. It's the defenseman, the freshman Joe Ahrens in the box for DePaul. Five and a half left in this first period. Illinois down a goal. They've already tied it up once and they can do it again on what correspondingly has been a very electric power play as well. It's the top line for Illinois plus 
That appears to be Alexander Matvey. Bogdanoff wins the faceoff, but Illinois has to tag back up. Check that, Ettingen, not Matt V for Illinois. Atticus Helfer now turns it around, finds the aforementioned Ettingen, looks to swing it across. That's Harrison Slovic, back pedals to the wall and sent back around now. Swung back to the far side, Bogdanoff, Helfer, Slovic has a lane, fires in, save made, still alive in front and swallowed by Asher Motu. Again, really only one mistake for Motu in this game and that was the miscommunication between himself and his defenseman. Nobody called for who was gonna grab the puck, and that led to a goal from Matthew McDonald five minutes into this game. The lone source of scoring for Illinois. They look to get one more back here on the power play. Atticus Helfer has it on the near side, fires in, save made, still alive in front. Pulled out now halfway through. Still in front, Motu is down, play is stopped as the net was dislodged, and a huge break there for DePaul. Four chances in roughly about six seconds right there. That one got halfway back between the crease and the point. Where that appeared to be Gregory Ettingen who was able to feed one in beautifully from a spot he's very familiar with on that near side. He loves shooting from that distance. Golden opportunity there, but with Motu down on his rear, DePaul caught a break there with the net dislodged. A minute 20 left. In this power play, Illinois able to win that 50-50 puck battle. One battle becomes another as Bogdanoff goes down. He controls it now, got back up quickly, and his team will reset. Helfer turns around. Matt Viva shot. Dorian trying to feed it in. Still alive in the trapezoid now. Bogdanoff fighting for it. Sent back around. Joe Dorian doing a great job screening and making this game very murky for Asher Motu on those power play shots. Helfer. Matt Vive turns it around. Back to Helfer at the near side point. To the far side now. Fires in for Bettingen. Save made right in front for a shot. Great covering distance there from Motu. He got big and denied that one. Arms out almost like a bear hug right there from Asher Motu. To be able to cover that distance onto the near side. And deny that rebound shot. Illinois looks to get more here. 25 seconds left. Helfer a shot. Turned aside to the near side. Elfer gets it back, looks to go in, feeds it back now to Alexander Matviev. He goes in, and the shot too high. Ten seconds left on the power play. Illinois will have to reset now in neutral ice. Abbreviated line change for DePaul. Sent back around to Alexander Matviev, and that will pretty much do it. A penalty killed. We're back to five on five now. Going around one man there and firing was Chris Lee. Nothing much he could do there. To the other side now. Anthony Verossi has it taken away in the near side corner. DePaul looks to work quickly. Cross ice pass in the neutral zone. Gaining the zone, moving around there is Passion with a shot. Too high. Inside of three minutes here as DePaul makes another rush. Still able to hold on to it there as Passion. Backhand feed, still in front. Turned aside and all the way back to the point. They look to feed it into the trapezoid, taking that away in the right place at the right time was Emmett Joy, and he clears it. Waters all around on that Illinois bench is their speed, resilience, their, the test against fast teams. Again, that's been a problem for them on the season. And a huge stride here being able to stay in this one in that regard, in that specific game within the game, the speed battle. They've been able to keep pace certainly with the ball. And two, they've been able to slow it down on their end as well, particularly with the forecheck. That one got close. Now another battle for it. Patrick McDonough tries to clear, taken away now. Moving in for a shot. Great block right there, that was Patrick McDonough. And now Illinois with some work as that one saved and turned aside. This game turning into a track meet over the last 30 seconds. The bump there from Aiden Taylor, but he goes down. Centering pass goes wide right there. Dorian looks to control, 
fed back around to the near side point where it will be controlled by DePaul, but in the neutral zone, they have to reset. Taking that one now, moving in. Martirano trying to feed a man, now shoots, and a save made off the right pad from Missouri. Ettingen bodies a man. A frisky hit there on Xander Plotkin. Another shot there, and going up to grab that one. And freezing it. That one off the stick of Chris Lee. A minute and a half left in this first period. The shot's 14 to 11 in favor of DePaul. And the goals again in the favor of the Blue Demons by a score of two to one. The second line on now for DePaul. Again led by the captain, Brock Ash, already with a goal in this game. Face off one by Newton, took quickly over to Ash. He serpentines around a few men, backhand chance, save made, still in front. That one carries back to the trapezoid. Dorian, it's in his skate, he looks to clear it. Now Bogdanoff looks to do the same. David Ettingen sent back around, still being fought for. Atticus Helfer able to take that one away. Too many sticks colliding there. That slowed it down for Illinois. Near side, Nathan Dash, a minute 10 left in the first period. DePaul now controls. They send it back around, unable to handle that one. That nearly gives Illinois a chance. Still being fought for, near side, and controlled. Atticus Helfer very pesky on the forecheck in this game for Illinois. He has been their main source of pressure in that regard. DePaul sends it back the other way, and the call from the linesman is that Luca Theodosopoulos was offside. 47 seconds left in this one. And again, you know, in retrospect, they, they always say hindsight's 2020, but I'll continue this point at the next break. Considering how DePaul's game went last week, not surprised that they're running right out of the gate. We'll talk about that at the next whistle, but for now, moving in now, Luke Alpe. 50-50 puck battle. He's still able to come away with it. Two men collide. That one in the trapezoid. Dangerous play there for DePaul. A scrum in front, taken and cleared. That got very dangerous right there. You have a puck lingering that close for that long of a time. And three white sweaters right there. DePaul's lucky that didn't turn into a goal. Illinois still fighting for it. They're able to keep it in their O-zone before DePaul clears it. Ten seconds left in the first period. Moving in now is Billy Passion. Sends a centering pass in, they score! And a mob scene in the far side corner for DePaul. As the goal right there from Michael Braspinick, he was in the air when he had contact of that one. And he ended up on his rear to the right of Ben Mazurik. Well, what can we say other than the fact that DePaul scored nine seconds into this game. They now end the first period with a score with nine seconds remaining. That was absolutely beautiful. And this first period literally bookended as close as you can get a mirror image of two DePaul goals and they are the difference both on the rush, both in transition. The first time it was Billy Passion doing the scoring. The second time it was the defenseman Braspenick with a beautiful play off of a feed from Passion. You take a look and you know you, you realize how quickly
It's time for the second period of play. And, you know, we were talking about this at the tail end of the first period. Hindsight's always 20-20, but you could still see a possibility of this game, how it would occur, how the first period would occur at least, coming in to tonight. We take you back to the end of last year where this DePaul team went into the Christmas break coming off of two beatdowns, including a 10-1 to route on their own home ice against Concordia. And they lived with that for almost a month's time. And fast forward to their opening game last week, their opening game of the new year against Wisconsin Oshkosh. And, you know, that, that sting definitely transpired into some angry play. They opened the year with a bang last week, nine goals in a route of UW Oshkosh and scoring a lot of bunches. And when they did score that first goal, you could almost see an internal confidence boost after each score there for DePaul. So they opened that year with a bang and you know, that, that feeling is, is so tempting. It, it, it's an automatic show and you know that they are gonna want more coming into tonight. And that's almost exactly what transpired. A goal right out of the gate, nine seconds in, another goal to end the period. And they had been moving very quickly. You can see that angry play, the, the desire to want more of that success that really fueled them last week coming off of those two routes. You can still see that manifesting here. David Ettingen chasing it down. He's harassed by three black sweaters. Deflection there that manages to get close and now Karen's to the near side. Holding onto that one now, that's Atticus Helfer trying to find a man at the point, that's Nathan Dash. Still kept alive now at the half wall. Turn around to the trapezoid right in front. Does not go from David Ettingen. Now with a burst of speed. DePaul moving back the other way. A three on three. A man on the far side feeds that one in off the glove of Missouric and cleared. And, then, and that last goal in particular was two to one for a long time. But that last goal at the tail end of the first period for DePaul. For Illinois, it's a backbreaker as much as it is a reality check. Your only scoring in this game came off of a huge mistake from the netminder, Asher Motu. About five minutes into this first period, Matthew McDonald was able to take advantage of it and score. And so, again, it's a reality check. You need to be able to create some more sustainable opportunities offensively. Use the four check. You've been so close, probably the area where you've been the closest has been those power play scrums. You just have to keep doing those and eventually one will fall. And then get some set offensive pressure you haven't really had any moments of set offensive pressure in the five on five here. A, a period of one or two minutes in the O zone where you keep it in your own zone and just hold on over there and get plenty of shots off. So look for the scrums, look for the power plays. As another one fired in here and Motu denies any of the aforementioned second chances. But I mean, count on the rebounds. Use that four check to your advantage, just how they got their first goal and the strength of yours exploiting a weakness of DePaul's and see if you can get some set offensive pressure. Haven't really had one of those series 21 and a half minutes into this game. No zone face off now, won by Illinois, but taken right to a black sweater, moving quickly on the far side, Xander Plotkin. He gets denied to the outside and a big hit right there from Aslan Zuzovekov right there for Illinois. Two men go down in the near side. And it's taken now to the far. Walking the line, the puck is there. Goes through two men, Illinois will able to control, looking to reset now, and backpedaling Alexander Huntley. That one manages to get deflected. A man goes down, still keeping it alive, DePaul is, before Illinois is able to clear it. Line change for Illinois and a shift they're gonna wanna forget. Illinois holds onto it now, near side. Two men fighting for it. Michael Braspenick, the goal scorer, in the middle of it there for DePaul. But it's still Caroms into the Illinois offensive zone before it's cleared. Now Illinois looking to reset, applying some quick pressure here. Bailey McCarthy unable to do anything right there as he too goes for a line change. Two and a half into this first period. DePaul controlling on the near side. Sent across to the far now. Alec Bogdanov trying to chase it down. Holding onto that one is Braspenick before Illinois takes it in neutral ice. Chase down for it now, Atticus Helfer with it. Trying to take it away at the far side half wall, lays the boom and does take it away ultimately. 
Great play to hold on to it before he turns it right over. The ball comes up with that one now. And Illinois able to take it away. Back and forth they go in the neutral zone. No team has really been able to get set here in the last few minutes or so. It's been a series of breakaways that have been the shot chances. Another one right there for DePaul. Illinois turns around. See if you can slow it down if you're the Illini here and get set. Moving in now though is Nathan Dash. Three on three, sends it across. David Ettingen not able to handle that one. Would have had a wide open chance. Sends it back around, Taylor a shot, does not go. DePaul's turn now to do the same. They're moving in a unit. And that shot goes wide. Now again, we talked about it. DePaul is hungry for more. They saw what that felt like last week in order to lay some retribution. And they want that feeling again. They're going right back on the attack here as a man has it in the trapezoid. Illinois still swarming defensively, but DePaul able to hold on to it now. Swung across, there are those far passes we talked about in the last period and frozen by Missouri. Four minutes into this first period, into the second period rather now. The score is still three to one in favor of DePaul. For Illinois, you're looking to get it out and create some sustained set pressure offensively. And if you're DePaul, you'll take those last two seconds as much as you can over and over. Keep the pressure on if you're the Demons. As that one managed to get close, not able to get stick the puck there for a goal was passion. He had a wide open net. He now takes it now at the half wall on the near side, taken out now but controlled by Illinois. Moving quickly there, Anthony Verassi. He's resorted to the far side, holding on to that one now. DePaul in the trapezoid, Verassi on the four check. Pesky, and that leads to an Illinois turnover. Gaining the zone, feeding it back in. That's Gregory Ettingen with it now. Has a man to his left. Backhand chance goes wide. Near side corner, Ettingen feeds for it with a man. Sends it all the way across. Chase down for it now. Nathan Dash holds onto it. Sends it back to the trapezoid where it's taken by Michael Health. And Illinois will control back in neutral ice. They're getting it in neutral ice, certainly, and they're keeping it on the outside, but they can't really get anything in right now, and they can't slow down the game. DePaul is controlling the pace right now. As Dash sends a backhand in, nearly another Illinois favorable scrum right there in front of the net, and swallowed up. And then we talk about ways for Illinois to slow DePaul down. One of them, again, is not letting them get those long passes from zone to zone, from one corner to the neutral ice. Another way of doing it is making them play isolated, keeping them to the outside. A way we haven't seen them employ a lot, but something they might want to consider is returning to their physical nature and applying a lot of hits. DePaul, one of their weaknesses is their size. Not their height, their size. And so that is a way relatively for Illinois to slow them down and to tire them out uh, with some physical play, whether in the open ice or on the boards. That's a way we haven't seen them use in this game. And another way which we have seen them use to great success is the forecheck. So really four ways right there for Illinois to slow DePaul down and turn this pace battle in their favor. Making it murky certainly will help that battle as well as they can slow the game down. DePaul looking to speed it up. Great play there to deny that one to the far side. That gives Illinois the possession and fed back around. On the near side, fed back on around. Taken now by DePaul, gaining the zone now, but it's a one on four, nothing much he can do there. Fed on into nobody, DePaul will reset in their own D zone. 
Six minutes having gone by here in this second period. David Ettingen has to tag up. And that gives DePaul the possession. And now the Illinois bench has the puck. Face off won by Anthony Martorano, taken now by Lee, goes around one man, gains the zone, has a lane and fires, and a quick shot, save made there by Missouri. And again, that's the kind of speed, the kind of playmaking ability we've seen from Chris Lee throughout his career here at DePaul that really caters so well into how this team plays. You see that series right there, those eight seconds, you know DePaul is right where they want to be in terms of controlling the pace. A scrum, and that one gets high, and the trapezoid now trying to clear that one is Aiden Taylor. Sidewinder there, looking for a centering pass. He gets one back to the point. Shot fired, deflected. Lee takes it now, wastes no time getting it back. Another scrum in front, pulled out now by a white sweater. Illinois looking to control. Pass too hot for a man to handle now. It's on the near side in the neutral zone. 50-50 puck battle for it, pulled out towards the eye. Bogdanoff has it, tries to play the ricochet game there, but too strong and controlled by DePaul. Josh Maloney has it, off the skate of one man, and that gives Illinois the puck. Gaining the zone there and moving in on the near side is Gregory Ettingen, he sends one wide. Chase down for it, Zhuzha Betkov has it, back to Ettingen. Ettingen's under man in the corner, sends a centering pass in, but before that happens, Ettingen goes down off of a hit and hit that might cost DePaul a penalty. It might cost DePaul a penalty and it might cost Gregory Ettingen some ice time. He appears to be holding on to his left shoulder as he heads over to the Illinois bench. It's DePaul applying the physical heat on one of Illinois' best players instead of it being the other way around. We talked about it when he was in the box, one of your more streaky players. You could use some of that right now if you're Illinois. But a great sight to see, he is back in the game. He got checked on, he came back out right immediately and he is on the near side. So that does not cost his team any ice time. It does cost his opponent a man advantage. Illinois is on the power play here with Josh Maloney in the box for that hit on the far side half wall on Gregory Ettingen. Atticus Helfer has it now. The aforementioned Ettingen looks for a shot. Deflected. Helfer has to sink that one to the far side. Back over to Ettingen. Beautiful pass. Fires one in. Deflected. And back to neutral ice. Some great plays right there on that series by Michael Helf to deny that. Illinois now getting in. Matt Viveras to the outside by Louis DiGiulio. And Illinois looks to reset. Here's a chance to get some sustained pressure and those skirmishes right in front that you've had. A lot of rebound chances in the power plays in the first period. Great deflection right there. Great stick play by Health. He caught Illinois napping. He controls it now and waits. A one on two. Dangerous territory here for Illinois. You're going against a team that is double digit in shorthanded goals on the season. But they do get it back, moving with a burst of speed. Bogdanoff's shot goes wide. Not a lot of rebound chances here for Illinois halfway through the power play. That is where they made their bread and butter on a lot of close shots in the first period. Let's see if they can return to that now. Two men play catch on the far side. Back to Gregory Ettingen at the near side point. Feeding it in, Zuzabekov back over now. Bogdanoff evades one man and fires right in front. Still alive, and it caroms back past the Illinois players and is cleared. Aslan Zuzabekov tracing it down now. Has to go around one man, play the ricochet game. 20 seconds left on the power play. Let's see if Illinois can get more. A white sweater resorted to the outside. Does manage to gain the zone, but taken away right there. Beautiful poke check by Brock Ash. David Ettingen fed it in, said a prayer. One of his teammates got hit as we're back to five on five. DePaul controls in their own defensive zone. Can Illinois apply a four check here and clear it? No, they cannot. Moving quickly now on the other side, that's Matt Newton. He goes around two men and fires and goes down. 
DePaul wanting a call, they do not get one. Illinois moving quickly now the other way, a two on three. Alpi harassed from either side, still manages to fire a shot and saved by Motu. That was a beautiful play on the other side by Matt Newton. Split the defense. And he did go down, no call for the word of the linesman, much to the chagrin of the DePaul fans and the DePaul bench. But still, Illinois has it in favorable territory in their own offensive zone. It appears to be Patrick McDonough prepared to take the face off. And this almost feels like a must win for Illinois. This face off here, get your first bit, your first series of sustained offensive pressure on the five on five. Keep it on your side of the ice for a minute and a half, two minutes, tire out this DePaul team and deny them from getting fresh bodies on the ice. That's another source of their speed. So we will watch this face off closely to see if McDonough can win it. Anthony Martorano opposing him. And the face off indeed won by McDonough, pulled out to the far side. Now pulled out to the corner now. David Ettingen has to control, gets hit by Martorano. McDonough right there to help him out. Nathan Dash unable to hold on to it there off a tough pass. A few more bodies collide and that gives DePaul the puck. But hold on, Illinois will have it right back where they want it. And certainly to the chagrin of Dan Wood, Illinois will go back on the power play. The call is a cross check, not a good sign. You're committing too many penalties here if you're DePaul and you're giving the opponent life. We talk about in the context of baseball, after you have a big inning, the last thing you want to do is walk the next guy you face on the other side. And you could argue the case, in the case DePaul has given Illinois so many opportunities with these power plays here in the second period. It's Chris Lee into the box. Not only do you not want a power play here for Illinois if you're DePaul, but your best defenseman is in the box. They're still controlling it anyway with their speed. Again, special teams, the strength of this DePaul team, particularly their ability to score shorthanded. Illinois needs to get set. They need to slow it down a little bit and get set. Matt Veeve tries to go around one man. He gets taken down. He's still down, but Illinois is still able to control. Atticus Helfer tries to go around one man. It's taking everything for Illinois to hold on to this puck as Ettingen's seen pass misses two. A minute 20 left on the power play, nine and a half left in what has been a scoreless second period. DePaul still up by two. Illinois needs one back here. DePaul's given them too many opportunities here. Now Illinois gives DePaul a chance, and that will lead to a shorthanded offensive zone faceoff for the Blue Demons. DePaul has given you too many opportunities here if you're Illinois to not be it for, for you not to cash in here and to make it a one goal game. And again, the strength of this DePaul team has been special teams on the power play. The speed, again, is a strength everywhere, no matter what discipline of hockey you're talking about. And two, 11 shorthanded goals on the season for DePaul. And again, we're only about 60% of the way through this 2023-24 season. Anthony Verassi gets a favorable ricochet, but nothing much he can do there. Harrison Slovic turned that one around to a white sweater. Illinois looking to control. They're shading heavily to one side. They need to get spread out here. DePaul is harassing them. They are all over these pucks and forcing Illinois to the outside. They're crowding the puck. They're keeping Illinois to the outside. They are giving you a taste of your own medicine. A beautiful penalty kill here for DePaul. Beautifully played. A breakaway now as Illinois tries to get one through. That's still alive in front and turned aside to the near side. Trying to keep that one in, but he cannot. Is Harrison Slovic. He has it now in his own D zone. Still in the Illinois zone. Anthony Verassi moving quickly. A man harassing him from behind. Tries to go through the legs of one and frozen by Motu with two seconds left on the minor penalty to Chris Lee. Eight minutes left in this second period. DePaul will have killed two straight penalties in roughly about five minutes time. They have been the more physical team. They have been the faster team. They have controlled 
the board play and have made Illinois play isolated. All litmus tests for Illinois on this own season. DePaul has won every one of them, particularly in this second period. Again, Illinois was able to keep pace with the speed of DePaul in that first period, but it really seems like that that last goal was a backbreaker. DePaul's playing with much more energy here in this second period, beating Illinois at what Illinois has done best. Taking that one now, Billy Passion. He's looking to move on the near side and does. Feeds it across to nobody. And before Joe Dorian can get his stick on that, play stopped. So who do you turn to now if you're Illinois? It's going to be the defenseman because Gregory Ettingen has just entered the box. His second penalty of the game. And DePaul can smell blood in the water. The top line on, a very electric top line. Again, look for the chemistry between Passion and Lee. Lee has it now, feeds it to the far side. Quick shot and a score! Five seconds into the power play. DePaul makes it a three goal lead. Michael Health credited with the goal from the center point. Number 22 on the season. For the 5'9 senior. Again, we talked about it earlier in this period how the chemistry is not just between Passion and Lee, although that's the one that dates the furthest back. Really four guys on this front line for DePaul who have so much chemistry and at the circle of every one of them is either Passion or Lee. That time it was Lee feeding it right in there to Michael Health for the goal. And now it's 4-1 DePaul and another breaker to the back for Illinois. Let's see how they play over the next few minutes. Do they play with more urgency, trying to get one back here, their backs against the wall? Do they increase the physicality? Do they try and go back to the four check? Quicker you can get a goal, it goes without saying, the less demoralized you become. We'll face off now in neutral ice on the near side. Face off one by DePaul, but controlled now, taking that one away, Sasha Matviv, diving attempt, but he can't do anything there. And grabbing that one like a third baseman is Ben Mazurik. Again, so far in the second period, the undoing for Illinois has been the inability to produce on the power play. They've had more advantages in the second period, but they've played better certainly in the first period, equaling the speed of DePaul and applying the four check and at times applying physicality. They've really done none of that here in the second period outside of a few plays from Gregory Ettingen and Anthony Verossi. It is Ettingen trying to apply the four check. He does take it away from a black sweater now and gives it to who else? Verossi, although he's harassed the one on two in the near side corner. DePaul looking to control as that one makes its way to the half wall and back to the corner. 50-50 puck battle controlled by the Demons and now over to the near side. Taking that one now, Anthony Martirano sends that across all the way. Trying to hold on to that one is Jujabek Koff for Illinois. He's harassed by a man on the far side near the corner. In the defensive zone, Illinois is, as we're at six and a half left here in this second period. Illinois able to take that one, but unable to handle it right there was Anthony Verossi going around one man, trying to at least, was Louis DiGiulio. And now Gregory Ettingen trying to go around one man, he does but he sends that one almost to the ceiling here at the ice arena. He got a lot of air under that one, and that might be one you want to have back. That, that one might linger at you when you go to bed tonight. Now an offensive zone for Illinois. Again, they're still trying to slow it down and get some set pressure. The face-off caroms towards the corner taken now by DePaul. Some action on the far side, a one on two, trying to move to his left, feed it to a man in front, he cannot. Good defense right there by Illinois. Aiden Taylor has it now, trying to clear it. 
at the near side point. It goes back to the neutral zone. In the middle of it there for Illinois is Bailey McCarthy, able to feed it into his offensive zone. Unable to take that one away, it goes right through his legs, Emmett Joy, and that gives DePaul an opportunity here. Brock Ash takes it, looking for a centering pass, it goes through everybody, and the Demons will have to reset. Josh Maloney now sends it across, too hot to handle for another man there. It goes to the near side half wall in the Illinois zone, now to the corner. Fighting for that one, Gregory Ettingen taken away by a black sweater now, DePaul controls. Sent back around, quick shot there for Maloney, deflected wide. To the far side, half wall now. That's Matthew McDonald and Emmett Joy right there for Illinois. Joy gets hammered into the boards. DePaul able to keep it in. Again, they're the ones sustaining the pressure and they're the ones that are hitting their opponents on the boards. Another shot in off the crossbar there and the net dislodged. Hand goes up, that might be a penalty. No man has yet moved to the box, but that one went off the, the crossbar. The hand did go up, but no movement in the box, and we're back to five on five here. Still being fought for now. The linesman in the middle of that one near the circle. And now Illinois able to clear it back to neutral ice. They clear it, but again, they're kept to the outside and one on two battles. Where have we heard that before in this second period? A great job by DePaul in that department. Another one on two on the outside on Bogdanoff and it's taken away by DePaul. Fed back in around now, they're able to control it. And a delayed clear there by Michael Braspenick. Four and a half left here in this second period. DePaul has tacked on one more to make it a three goal game. And they'll have a face off back in their offensive zone. Again, the only goal Illinois has had tonight was off of a miscommunication involving the netminder for DePaul, Asher Motu. Matthew McDonald was able to take it away right in front and send a backhand in high. Illinois has had some great rebound chances off of some power plays. Joe Dorian had done a great job screening the puck, but the team hasn't really been able to get a lot on the power play, two power plays in this second period. You could argue that it has been all DePaul here in this second period, despite a very valiant showing from Illinois in the first. Turned around now, there is Joe Dorian looking to clear it, and that's Atticus Helfer. Unable to handle that one is Bogdanoff. We've seen one too many of those as well. Good passes if the guy can hold on to them, but they go off the skate and carry him right to a black sweater. We've seen too many of those here in this second period and something Illinois is going to want to clean up going into the final frame. Still being fought for, controlled by Illinois in their own D zone. Nathan Dash sent around to the far side. It's DePaul applying pressure on the outside and keeping Illinois back to the corner, and they gain the puck. Michael Braspenick has it now. Gregory Ettingen trying to do the same. Brass Penick chips it in and doesn't bother to chase. Line change for the Demons. Eli and I have it now. A one on two, another chip and chase, and a good body up right there. Alfie trying to take that one away, pokes it back to neutral ice. DePaul still controlling in the form of Louis DiGiulio, handing it to the far side. Off of a few men, Karam's right back to an Illinois player, subsequently right back to DePaul. Back and forth here in the neutral zone over the last 30 seconds to a minute. No team really able to gain some sustained pressure. That did touch Verasi's stick, so no icing right there. DePaul has to chase it down. Verasi trying to apply a forecheck, goes off his stick right in front, and that goes wide right there off the shot from Matthew McDonald. Barassi and McDonald right there, nearly combined for another goal. One man steadfast on the forecheck, and the other man right there. A stick goes colliding right there, as unable to handle that one was Marco Selvaggi. Illinois looking to clear it, that one goes in on goal, swallowed up by Mazurik, and some tussling after that, as Selvaggi sent an Illinois player onto the ice. Salvaggi sent a man down, he got hit afterwards. I'm surprised again, we've talked about it, and I'm surprised we haven't seen more physicality from Illinois in this game. 
again. Illinois can tire out with the Paul's lack of size, you could say. Not necessarily height, but size. Illinois can tire them out with physicality and slow them down, and that is not something they have turned to, particularly in this second period. Not a lot of many unprovoked hits, you could say. There, a man appeared to be provoked in center ice, taking that one now, Atticus Helfer. Pass, Slovic, shot, save made. And some more collisions right in front. That time it was Alec Bogdanov. Two minutes left in this second period. Again, DePaul has tacked on one more to make it a one goal game. Face off to the right of Motu, pulled out to the corner, taken by DePaul now in the trapezoid. Sent to the near side, Ash has it, and he clears it. Beautiful seam pass across, taking that one now is Theodosopoulos. He still holds on to it, goes around two men, goes around another, backhand right in front, off the post! He got around three men and nearly had a goal. Holding on to that one now, DePaul still controls, near side corner. Theodosopoulos sends that back around for a shot right in front, and that goes wide. Chris Lee buying for it alongside David Ettingen. Fed back around now. Harrison Slovic turned around now. Illinois able to control. Atticus Helfer has to wait. Veteran move there from Helfer. He's waiting for his guys to get set as David Ettingen flung that one in. Backhand chance in front. That means scores! The sapling has popped from the ground for Illinois. They have life. It started with a veteran play by Atticus Helfer. He slowed it down. For those 15 seconds, he ensured that his team could control the pace. He waited for his guys to get set off a line change. A pass fed it back around. Matt Veeve was able to take it on the far side around the crease and then wraps it all the way around for a beautiful goal. Illinois trying to go back on the attack here off a deflection. Nearly got it back in the low slot. That one goes through two men. It did go off of one, so no ice and call. 45 seconds left here in this second period. Illinois has brought it back to a two goal deficit. Michael Brass Penick sends it to the far side, has it now. He's moving back and we're starting to see Illinois play with some more energy, particularly in their own offensive zone. Joe Dorian's turn to chase that one down and the puck iced with half a minute remaining. And, you know, just as we saw, you know, you're watching that DePaul game against UW Oshkosh last week and the scoring in bunches, the scoring in pairs, that first goal comes and you can almost see it. It's a visceral, that energy, that confidence boost, that internal boost that comes to these players after their team scores a goal. And so no doubt that's gonna help Illinois. And in the same way that a goal to end the first period helped DePaul take control really of 18 minutes of this second period, we won't be surprised if the same occurs for Illinois and they come out hungry right out of the third period. You know, you get a feeling, you get that dopamine hit that comes with scoring a goal and I want more. So that's exactly what you're thinking here if you're Illinois. And all of the hardship that did come from that second period is erased by the Matt Vive goal. 15 seconds left, a clear, but a beautiful feed zone to zone. DePaul trying for a last minute attempt here to round out the second period. Able to keep that one alive there was Manorino. DePaul able to control, six seconds left, trying to go in, seam pass, goes past everybody, and that will carry him back around and end period number two. So all of the hardship of the first 18 minutes. Lockdown defense from DePaul. They were beating Illinois at their own game. But the mental battles that come 
with that hardship erased after the goal from Alexander Matviev. So still a two goal deficit, but this time it's Illinois who has the momentum going into period number three. That should make for an exciting final frame. 20 minutes of hockey left to go in this battle of I-57. We'll be back for the third period after this.
Welcome back. Before the third period, a quick reminder that you can bid on today's Game 1 Illini Hockey Sweaters honoring Autism Spectrum Disorder Awareness. You can go to app.galabid.com slash Illini Hockey Auction. That's app.galabid, G-A-L-A-B-I-D, dot com slash Illini Hockey Auction. The link is also on the team website and all social medias. Again, you can take home one of today's game-worn sweaters in honor of ASD and autism awareness at app.galabid.com slash Illini Hockey Auction. And if the Illini do manage to come back, down two goals to start this third period, that would be a memorable piece of merchandise to own and for a great cause indeed. And we reflect back on how the first period ended, DePaul with a goal to end the first period. What a backbreaker that would be. And it proved to be that for the first 18 minutes of the second period with the Demons essentially controlling everything. And then a goal from Alexander Matveev off of a breakaway. And now it's Illinois who has the momentum with the exact same score going into the third period. Holding on to that one now on the near side, trying to control it, turning it around now. DePaul has it. Illinois applying more physicality here as taking that one now. It's back to the point. Quick shot there, does not go. Turned around now, DePaul still able to control. Sent back around, and now back to that corner. Illinois able to control it here. DePaul still has it in the meantime. Illinois able to take it away. Pass over to nobody. Fight for it now, but holding on to that one is Josh Maloney in neutral ice. Now Illinois has it on the other side, moving and sending that one in there before it's taken by Motu. Atticus Helfer now. Back around, quick shot there, they score! And that is the second goal of the game for Alexander Matveev. Our scratch hasn't come up here. Is it, is it all right if you... one now is Ben Mazurik holding on to that one now DePaul able to control Brock Ash gets hammered into the boards Illinois applying a lot more physicality here as unable to handle that pass there was Gregory Ettingen Apologies for the technical difficulties there. Full crew now. Able to hold on to that one now. Anthony Martirano on the face off. At the half wall now. DePaul still fighting for it before it's taken now. Anthony Martirano has it. Alpi trying to feed that one around. Illinois trying to clear it now. DePaul increasing some speed. Illinois increasing some physicality as a result. Gregory Ettingen and back now. Bailey McCarthy, a one on three. He's trying to be patient and wait for his line mates to join him. 50-50 puck battle on the far side. That carom's close and a save made by Motu.
Now Illinois skates out five, and DePaul skates out four. It's the aforementioned Martirano in the penalty box. Illinois looking to get reset. DePaul's harassing them on the outside now. That's Joe Dorian trying to feed it back. He gets right back to the net to set some screens. Helfer swings it around. That's Bogdan off. Feeds it in. Save made. Still alive in front. Trying for a backhand. They score! Two and a half minutes in. Illinois has tied it up. And in the exact way possible that we talked about it, on the power play, getting rebounds right in front, the power play skirmishes were Illinois' best answer in the first period. And that time, it was Alec Bogdanov. In two and a half minutes, the Illini have tied it back up. And now it's DePaul who is backpedaling tremendously. Now, how do they respond? Now they're the demoralized ones. How quickly can they get back on the attack? The speed certainly helps with that, although a one on two there. Great swarming defense by Illinois. Aiden Taylor able to take that one away there. He's trying to clear it. Another man gets harassed by the Illinois bench. 50-50 puck battle right in front. Still being fought for and play stopped before anything can come of that. Now three minutes having gone by, two early goals here in period number three from Illinois. Face off one by Illinois. Now they're the ones moving quickly with a lot of speed. It's been a very different game here in the early second and the early third period, dictated by how the previous period came to a close. On the far side now, Illinois clears. Kept to the outside there by Brock Ash. The same man still holding onto it, looking for a centering pass. He gets one in a shot, too high and into the netting. And that was a very interesting phenomenon. The first period ended with a DePaul goal. They come out and control almost the entire second period until a minute and 10 left. And Matt Vive scores for Illinois. He controls the end of the second period and his team has gone on the jump here to start period number three. They returned to the transition hockey and the scrums created right in the crease, the rebound chances on the power play. There are two main sources of scoring up to this point in the season. Swarming defense here from Illinois. We saw them use that in the first period. They've returned to it here. They're playing with a lot of moxie. They just got two goals back, three in the last five minutes of play going back into the second period. Four to one DePaul has become a 4-4 game in just five minutes as that one caroms wide. DePaul looking to control. They're just now looking to get it out of their own zone and sustain some time, but the whistle of the linesman will prevent them from doing so. It's an icing. Matt Vive trickles that one back around. The ball looking to clear. Illinois is doing exactly what they wanted to. They're making them resort to the short passes. The ball able to get it in though now as a shot there goes wide for Michael Health. Illinois has been making them go assembly line style with the passes, which is what we talked about earlier in the game in terms of slowing them down. A big hit there from Health on Matt Vive. But the ball nearly had one right there. Patricia Betkov tried to go in, he could not. It caroms all the way back to neutral ice, chased down for it now. That will be sent all the way around into the Illinois zone on the doghouse. A man trailing Alec Bogdanov, a two-on-one 50-50 puck battle, and the speed of DePaul will pay off there in the form of Billy Passion. DePaul controls, pass too hot for a man to handle, but it caroms right to a black sweater. 
Xander Plotkin now. He's kept to the outside, feeds that one in, but it's taken away by Zhuzhebetkov. Able to evade one man and now clear it to neutral ice. That's Bogdanov. Gains the zone, but kept to the outside. Has some help in the form of Ettingen, who fires. Shot goes too high. Harrison Slovic right there, trying to apply some more pressure. He has it taken away from him. Illinois trying to keep it in. They do. That's Bogdanov. Able to walk the line. Now send it across to David Ettingen. Ettingen has it at the half wall on the far side. Now in the corner, looking for a centering pass. Rolls all the way around now to Luke Alpi. Alpi fires. Great stick right there. Great body up right there by Xander Plotkin to deny that chance. One-on-one -on -one defense right there and a butte there from the 5'10 junior. Now the other way comes Illinois. It's the aforementioned Alpi who fires another one from the same location and bottled up by Motu. 14 minutes, 11 seconds left in a tie hockey game. Again, if you're just joining us, DePaul got out to a quick start in the first period, three to one, including a backbreaker with nine seconds left in the first period. That allowed them to control a large majority of the second period until it was Illinois with a late goal to end a period in that second. That made it four to two, and two and a half minutes into the third period, Illinois gets two goals in that time to tie this game and they've had the momentum ever since. They're keeping it in their own zone. They're applying a lot of pressure, some more hits against these DePaul players, and they're playing some swarming defense. The litmus tests for these two teams appear to be the same tests, and it's been Illinois winning them in this third period. DePaul trying to change that as that shot gets too high right there off the stick of Nathan Shorts. 50-50 puck battle now, still being fought for in the far side corner. Nathan Dash holding onto it. Still being fought for there, pulled out to Illinois, trying to move with a burst of speed now, Bailey McCarthy, but he gets shoved by the Illinois bench. Those two still going at it as a line change now for Illinois. DePaul trying to make quick work because of that fact. Joe Ahrens fires, save made, turned aside by Missouri. That one, Karam's off the netting. Nathan Dash better be careful. One on two, and DePaul gets the possession. Into that corner now, but too hot for a man to handle. Now that's Joe Dorian looking to clear it. Back to square one for Illinois. They do clear it. Ettingen went around one man, but couldn't retain control of the puck. And now controlling that one in the air own defensive zone. Sent across now, trying to go around. Still being fought for in the neutral ice. Illinois doing a great job denying DePaul the ability to get some speed. They're making this game murky. They're making this game very physical. And again, whichever team has been able to do more of that has been the aggressor in this game. Atticus Helfer now, a one on two, goes around one man, makes a swim move around him just to gain that puck. Some more skirmishes there. Again, Illinois muddying this game up along the boards and it's worked to their advantage, still in their own offensive zone, but taken by DePaul, waiting patiently to clear it. That's about as long as he could have waited, as Illinois still controls it in neutral ice. It's been all Illinois here in this third period, just as it was all DePaul for most of number two. Sent to the far side by Zhuzhebetkov, now trading places on the near side, moving around there. That's Luke Alpi who tries to get it in, deflects off a man. Now DePaul has it. Unable to handle that one though. Possible breakaway denied there. And now Zhuzhebetkov goes around one man, gains the zone, has a lane, fires in front. Another pass does not go. Still in the trapezoid now, still being fought for. Unaware as to where it is, and now DePaul has it. Michael Health will slow things down. Now DePaul will try to find their footing once again. They do, passion fires, save man, and you can hear that one from up here, from Men, Missouri. No surprise to see DePaul turn to Billy Passion to try and gain the momentum back in this game. Their best player already with a goal in this game. He is lined up just to the right of the center circle now. As the face off now, won by Bailey McCarthy, pulled to the corner now. Sent all the way around and cleared. Illinois has to take that one back into their own defensive zone. DePaul trying to create a four check here, leading the charge, Michael Health. Illinois able to clear it. And off of a few more passes, it does go back to Joe Dorian. Dorian on the far side, one on two. DePaul 
with some defense of their own, creating that a one on three. Illinois still able to control as Dorian found someone, but play stopped. Motu swallows it up. A very quick moving third period here. The two goals from Illinois, two and a half minutes in. Nothing since, although it has been all Illinois. 10 minutes and 47 seconds left in a tied hockey game. Face off to the right of Motu, pulled out into the near side corner. Now into the trapezoid, trying to get a stick on that, Anthony Martirano. He's waiting patiently as he tries to clear it. Illinois swarming when they do, but DePaul does clear it. Kept in the offensive zone off of Ricochet, now Illinois pokes it out. That's Anthony Verasi. now Alexander Matviva one on four, chips it in, says a prayer. Ettingen tries to answer that prayer, but DePaul first to the puck. Seam pass cut off, still controlled, however, and stopped. the midway point of the third period here in a tie hockey game. Illinois trying to get one more here. They already have two in this third period. Motu denies that shot from David Ettingen. And some more friendly exchanges after that around the crease. Again, it all started a minute and 10 seconds left in the second period with a wraparound goal from Alexander Matviv on a play that Atticus Helfer started with his patience in gaining the zone. Illinois had nothing going for them for 20 minutes prior. They go into the second period, the second intermission on that high note, and then they come out and score two more. That has been the turning point thus far in this game. And that occurrence is indeed very close to putting Illinois over the top. They have controlled the puck and the ice time for most of this third period. They do control it here. Zhuzhebekov on the point. Unable to get stick the puck there was Bogdanov. Dorian on the near side. Illinois looks to gain the zone. That's Bogdanov now. Feeds it into Atticus Helfer. Able to get it back and keep it in to the far side half wall. David Ettingen trying to control it, trying to delay as his team gets a line change. He does successfully. Zhuzhebetkov now trying to do the same. David Ettingen feeds it in. Wraparound chance off the outside netting. And the net dislodged. Play stopped. Nine minutes, 12 seconds left. So the neutral zone face off now on the near side. Bailey McCarthy wins that one for Illinois. Joe Dorian now. McDonald. A few more men collide. Let's see if DePaul can create anything out of that. They go into the offensive zone with speed, but they're kept to the outside by a swarming Illinois defense that forces a one on two. They are able to reset though, and it's sent to the near side point. Chris Lee, seam pass, able to get in. They score! The ability to reset the puck. Chris Lee turns it around. A beautiful feed from Lee to who else? Billy Passion, who is able to go top shelf. And the doorstep goal right there. We talked about that chemistry so many times. They've been friends since the first grade. They've played together in high school at York High in Elmhurst. They have been on lines for so many years of their lives, probably more than half of their lives they've been on lines together. 
and that chemistry was as old as time and as ripe as a fine wine right there. Lead a passion for the goal, passion's second of the evening. DePaul now up five to four, and now they're the ones moving quicker with the momentum. That's Chris Lee right there in the trapezoid, vying for it, he doesn't know where it is. Ettingen trying to feed it away. Lee deflects it, able to keep it in the offensive zone. Feeds it in wide, DePaul looking to reset now. That seems to be the recipe. Slow it down, reset, and then go back to what works, in this case, the chemistry. Fed in by Maloney, and save made. It was very interesting there. It was DePaul the one slowing things down, as Illinois was the one all over them. Illinois was the one beating them at their own game, the speed game. Now you turn that around, DePaul's the one playing the Illinois move, having to slow it down, clear the head, and then get right back to your bread and butter. A beautiful scene pass right there from Chris Lee in to Passion. And now it's DePaul controlling the ice time. Joe Dorian trying to change that, creates a 50-50 puck battle and clears it. Maloney feeds it back to neutral ice. Illinois controls. Joe Dorian sends it in, a one on two, becomes a one on three. DePaul briefly able to control. Alec Bogdanoff harassing a man though, trying to take control of the puck. Bogdanoff very pesky on the four check here as DePaul tries to clear the zone. Illinois holding onto it for the time being. They do get it. Shot in, save made, alive in front, backhand chance does not go. Beautiful stretch right there from Motu to deny a goal. He's had a few saves of that caliber in this game. He has shown up when he has needed his team to and again really only made one mistake and that was that first goal, the miscommunication. He has had some great saves and some great quick moments of reaction time when called upon. Atticus Helfer throws the puck across the line. Nathan Dash sends it around. In the right place at the right time there is Bailey McCarthy. Seven minutes left. DePaul has tacked on one more off the Passion Lee connection. Nathan Dash patient with it. Too hot to handle there for Matthew McDonald. And high stick the call there on Aiden Taylor. So now if you're Illinois, and, and almost fitting that this does happen, considering what the whirlwind this game has been, you almost go back to where you were when this game was two to one, in the sense that they have scored, if you're DePaul, DePaul is winning, but you have come back from one goal deficit. You've come back from two goal deficits in this game, three goal deficits. So you're, in a sense, you know, you're right back to where you were earlier in this game, in the sense that it's a hill to climb, but it's a hill you've climbed before, and it's nothing short of attainable with six minutes and 24 seconds left in this game. Trying to make quick work there is that shot off the glove of Missouri and too high. Matt Newton trying to hold on to it. Sidewinder there does not go. Save made. Zhuzhebekov harassed by Martirano, but cleared by Illinois. Chase down for it. A man gets there first. That's Josh Maloney. Barassi denying him. Those two go back and forth. Sent across, though, in a lane now for Theodosopoulos. Chips it in. Doesn't bother to chase. Gives Illinois control of the puck. Five minutes, 45 seconds left. The Illini need a goal in that time. A man loses a stick, but that delays the advantage. The move here for Illinois. They'll have to reset again. Joe Dorian has it on the near side. Feeds it to neutralize. Illinois sends it across. Nathan Dash gains the zone off that pass from Dorian. David Ettingen trying to hold on to it. Taken now by DePaul, still being fought for. Ricochet goes Bogdanoff's way, however. Illinois able to control, and they're set. Great deflection right there. Great play defensively by Michael Health. We've seen many of those from him in this game. The stick blocks are the full body blocks denying Illinois from the point. That one will run all the way around. Joe Dorian has to clear it. Pass across. Too hot to handle there for David Ettingen. He has to chase that one down, opposing him. Ryan Plotke. Those two collide. Illinois still has it, looking for a centering pass. Too much traffic in the way to get stick to puck there. 
to Paul controls, a chase for it now at the half wall on the near side, cleared by the Demons, moving quickly now and using his speed, trying to go around one man. Both men got collided right there and a penalty coming against Billy Passion. So Illinois back on the power play. Four and a half minutes left in this game. Passion into the box. He had his left arm wrapped around what appeared to be Harrison Slovic as those two tried to feed for the puck and the linesman was right behind him, a few feet behind him, and was able to call that one. Man, when, when Passion grabbed that one at the blue line on, on his side of the ice, with his speed, you almost feared for the worst if you're an Illinois fan. And, but certainly with his ability, with his speed, he almost threw that one away with the locking of the arms and the sort of corkscrewing of Harrison Slovic. That gives Illinois a power play and they'll have a face off to the right of Motu. That might be the one you want to have back here if you're Billy Passion. Two goals and an assist in this game. And now he's watching from the penalty box, relying on his defense to bail him out. Period number two as DePaul clears it. Tick tock goes to the clock here. Four minutes, 15 seconds left. A minute 40 left on the power play here for Illinois. A golden opportunity to get one back, or can DePaul deny them the way they did when they had the momentum in the second period? 50 50 puck battle pulled out to Illinois. Atticus Helfer has it at the near side point. Moves to his right, now to his. A minute 20 seconds left. Four minutes left. In Matt Vive, far side. One timer does not go. Illinois has to reset again. Helfer gains the zone, goes around one man, kept to the outside, able to poke check it in around towards the trapezoid on the far side. Joe Dorian trying to hold on to it, chase down for it now in the near side corner. It's DePaul's turn to muddy up the game. Helping them here on this penalty kill. Three and a half minutes left in this game with the Blue Demons up a goal. We're moving quickly on the other side now and a chance in front, denied! Beautiful play right there by Illinois. That was Gregory Ettingen with the poke check away as nearly with a chance there to perhaps ice it was Michael Helf. Line change for Illinois. And that was dangerous too, Helf four of DePaul's 11 shorthanded goals on the season, nearly with another right there. Beautiful play by Ettingen to keep his team in it. But let's see now if the Illinois offense can cash in on that. Zhuzhebetkov has it, feeds it to the half wall, gets it back at the point, moves to his right. Sends it across, gets it back. Zhuzhebetkov still with it, five seconds left. Slovic in, fire, save made. Still holding onto it. Back to five on five. Illinois looking for a centering pass. You better be careful. He just got harassed right there as Zhuzhebetkov sent that one in. That was dangerous, Anthony Varasi right at the center point with Billy Passion coming right out of the penalty box and that nearly led to a turnover. So now, as the power play has expired, Illinois calls a timeout. Two and a half minutes left in this game and that'll give both teams an opportunity with how to play this one. A chance to talk things over. We will have our eyes on Ben Mazurik to see if Again, DePaul got out early, just as they did with Wisconsin Oshkosh. They got out early here against Illinois. In the first, to Illinois' one, and the backbreaker to end the first period. Breaker that really gave them the control and the pace and the momentum here in the second period. DePaul tacked on one more before it was Illinois was able to score at the end of the second period and that gave them the momentum for most of the third period until the goal came across the oldest connection on this ice Billy Passion and Chris Lee who else for DePaul combining for the goal Passion's second on the day so now What's interesting about this game and how this will play out is the litmus tests have been the same for both teams. Be more physical, muddy it up on defense, on offense, have more speed, and 
it'll work for you. You know, we talk about styles of play and how the speed has hurt Illinois at times in this season, particularly in the Michigan State Series and the Roosevelt Series as well. But the speed has certainly helped them as well in this series, particularly on those two goals in the third period. And so that's something to look for here with two and a half minutes left is can Illinois cash in on the speed? If they do manage to cash in, through what method will it be? Because the litmus test for both these teams have been the same. And we'll see who can be the quicker team, the more physical team, and the team who controls the time of possession. We'll have a face off back to the right of Asher Motu. Motu with 28 saves on 32 shots. His counterpart, Ben Mazurik, with 32 on 37. Illinois wins the faceoff. Slovic has it. In the trapezoid now, Karam's off of one man and cleared by DePaul. And Illinois smartly lets that one go as that is an icing. DePaul doesn't like that. And it will give Illinois take three in their own offensive zone. Or will it? No, it will not. It appeared the puck was last touched in the defensive zone on behalf of DePaul, but no, a faceoff at center ice, still able to be controlled by Illinois, so not a lot of time lost for them, but they do not control the possession here as DePaul with more time on their side. Two minutes left. Illinois still down a goal. We will have our eyes on Ben Missouri. Chris Lee has to chase that one down, one on two, able to feed it back to the zone. They slow it down. He tried to go right to the net to win that faceoff as the puck stayed there and Illinois won it. There's Zurich. He's going to the bench now. Illinois has yet to be able to control it in their own offensive zone, trying to feed one in. Still alive right there. And a save made. Found scrums that they have forced right in front of the net. An offensive zone face-off, six skaters on the ice for Illinois, but DePaul clears it, a wide open chance now, and that will do it. Number three for Billy Passion, the hat trick, six to four, Blue Demons. And DePaul, the difference in this game Certainly, the difference in this game, certainly what opened the door for DePaul to get the momentum back was the final goal, the deciding goal off a beautiful feed from Chris Lee to Billy Passion. The deciding goal off a beautiful feed from Chris Lee to Billy Passion. That was the difference. Five seconds into a power play just four or five minutes ago. And in the same way that all it took for Illinois was one goal to get the momentum back in the form of Alexander Matveev at the end of the second period, that's exactly what happened at the midway point of the third period. It's a beautiful feed from Lee to Passion. They slowed it down and they took matters into their own hands. A lot of similarities between those two turning point goals in this game as we're within 35 seconds now. Illinois able to control, looking to get one back very quickly and make this a little bit more interesting. 30 seconds left. But you know, on the goal to Alexander Matveev at the end of the second period that gave Illinois the momentum, it was Atticus Helfer, veteran defenseman turned left winger who waited patiently, who slowed it down, who waited for his players to get off from the line change and to get set. Then Matveev and Verasi took matters into their own hands. On the other side, as a quick shot there from Harrison Slovic, Karam's in front. Illinois still able to keep it in. Alpi fires one wide. And play stopped as the net dislodged. Compare that with the goal moments ago from Billy Passion to make this a 5-4 game on the power play. They won the faceoff. Chris Lee waited for everyone to get into place, and then they got right to work.
So now 15 seconds left as some more players collide behind the trapezoid. That will just about do it. A resilient win from DePaul. They had the momentum taken away from them and they nearly gave up a three goal lead. As some more jawing in front of the net with a second left on the clock. But they were resilient, credit to them. Illinois came back down three and then Billy Passion with the last two goals to finish this game as the linesman will call it with 1.2 on the clock. And that will do it. Six to four in favor of the Blue Demons. Their second win in as many games on this new calendar year. Again, you still imagine that those two losses to UW Concordia are going through their heads. That's how they ended the break. And you come in, you put up nine goals last week in one game in a route of Wisconsin Oshkosh. You get that feeling how sweet it is, you want more. So you come right out of the gate. And more importantly than that, Dan Wood's squad tonight showed a ton of resilience. Having given up three goals, they came back and brought two more. So a well-earned win for DePaul, Illinois. Showed a lot of grit of their own as well, coming back from three, and they showed off how streaky of a team they can be. We've seen it at parts this season, and they certainly showed it off again. Great developments for both teams certainly tonight, but DePaul, the winner, they were able to finish the job, and they won the last five or six minutes, fulfilling those very litmus tests that impacted both teams. That will do it for us at this time. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. when these two teams face off once again to round out this weekend series. For all of us in the broadcasting crew, this is George Corey saying so long from the Big Pond in Champaign. DePaul takes game one, and we'll see if they can knock the sweep tomorrow night when these two battle again.